Hey, watch this. New in DaVinci Resolve 19.1, if I pull over a little folder here, and I have this folder with some footage in it, if I drag this into my media pool, if you have a mismatch in frame rate, you'll get the normal pop-up, um, it will duplicate that bin and show you everything inside of it, but if we right-click on this bin, we have a few options. Down here, Resync Media Files. This was added just a small update or two ago. You might have missed it. If you add any more video clips into that folder, then you can click this button and it will scan that folder update and bring in all those updated clips. Or, new in DaVinci Resolve 19.1, we have this new option, automatically resync media files. If I turn that on, I go back to that folder. I'll even open it up now. You'll see these video clips. If I bring over another folder, I've got extra video clips. If I grab these three, drop them in that folder, those get moved over, and hey, inside Resolve, those are automatically added to that folder. I've seen lots of people request this, here it is. We'll hit a few more highlights from DaVinci Resolve 19.1 in this video, but I wanted to say that a link to the Blackmagic Design support page um, will be in the description that will link you um, right to this update if you don't get it through Resolve. And there you should also see the full patch notes if you want to go through everything they've changed with a little more detail. I'm just going to show off some stuff I thought was really cool. But luckily, there's a lot that I think is pretty cool. Let's keep showing stuff off. If I drop all this footage onto a timeline, it will automatically create that timeline here. And if I access this from in the media pool, we have that timeline. Then I can right click and under timelines, I have add to render queue um, using any of our custom presets we've made or the defaults that bring in are your H.264 and H.265 master. I believe they just added this to the edit page a little while ago. So if you spend more time organizing files or moving around in the media pool, you can now do this from here as well. It's small, but nice. But if I head back to my timeline now, if I something like get rid of this one clip, I want to show off one change we added, and that is that pasted clips now always paste at your playhead. You might have assumed it's always worked this way, and it did most of the time. But, you know, for instance, if I just demonstrate, if I just trim this clip down a bit and, and I wanted to copy and paste it somewhere on this clip, if I had an active in and out point, it would always paste at that in and out point, even though my playhead was in this different location. Notably, this did clear my in and out point. I see a lot of new beginners get tripped up by this in and out point as well. If it pops up on your screen and you don't know quite what to do, uh, Alt X also gets rid of that in and out point. But if you have that set up on uh, your timeline for whatever reason, just know that if you paste in footage now, it'll always paste that at your playhead, even if you have in and out points somewhere on your timeline. If I click this menu to open up my timeline settings, I have this fixed playhead option, which if I scroll in, you'll see your playhead is always in the same location and your timeline sort of scrolls underneath that. New in Resolve 19, I can move this playhead, which you're like, isn't that kind of getting rid of the point? But this is just moving like the relative position. So now if I come over here and play, the playhead remains fixed, but at that location. Maybe if you want a little bit more of a window of what's coming down the timeline, you can move it down to the side. Again, small, but nice, and good to know if you toggle this on, but then you're moving it around, you're not sure what's going on. Uh, it's a fixed playhead that you can move. This one I'm very excited to show off. If I pull up my effects, grab something uh, simple like this binoculars effect. If I drop that on this clip, that will come in as a fusion effect. And if I come back to playback and toggle on my render cache to smart, then you'll see we get this cache line over that effect. I've talked a lot about the render cache system in the past, but one sort of always kind of confusing or funky area was this specific caching of fusion effects on a clip. You had this right click menu where you could choose to render cache fusion effects and you could cache those for specific effects, but the default behavior under that smart setting wouldn't be to cache these fusion effects applied directly on the clip. And sometimes those can get uh, pretty heavy. <laughs> This is also working on adjustment clips, which I believe this might have been an extra area that people were running into issues before. I know some editors who have had some issues tossing lots of fusion effects on adjustment clips because Resolve didn't always know how to handle that because the effect isn't on the clip itself. It gets wild, but it looks like it's recognizing this and caching that adjustment clip with fusion clips applied to it. Especially if you didn't know the general intricacies of the render cache system, this will definitely help a lot of people get the benefit of that system without climbing through a bunch of extra menus. By default, uh, render cache will now cache fusion effects. Let's talk about audio. Now I'm gonna toggle off this uh, fixed playhead because it's messing with me. <laughs> I'm gonna stay 
in the edit page, but if I just look down at my mixer down here, um, right now I only have one track, but if I drag some stuff on the different tracks, we'll start to see what's going on. On the edit page, you always had pretty limited options. You could click this panel to open up panning, but even if you stretched it out, you just had a few icons like here, if there were effects or EQ or dynamics. But now these little extra icons here, if I double click on that EQ, it'll pop up the window for that EQ here without needing to open up the Fairlight page. You can get rid of that, open up uh, uh, your effects, which you live in your inspector up here, or your dynamics here. I'm pretty used to hopping back and forth between the Fairlight page for this stuff, um, but this is really nice, especially if you only have a few tracks. It's, it's pretty out of the way down here in the corner, and now if you want to check your EQ dynamics, it's, it's just living there. You just have that super, super quick sort of like hot link option here in your mixer. And speaking of one of those audio effects, um, I showed off this Ducker in Resolve 19, but if I toggle that on, open up the effects. So a Ducker, normally you would put on like a music track and when a voiceover started, the Ducker would automatically bring down the volume of the music track and then if someone stopped talking, the audio would come back up. But we have a new option in Resolve.9 and it looks like you have to access this option in this inspector control itself. You'll see I have the source or what track is it looking at and the duck level, how much is it bringing it down as well as some advanced options. But now you have this little plus, so you can click that and add a source from a different audio track. So if you were recording an interview or something and you had one music track, but you had people speaking on two different tracks, you could look at both of those vocal tracks and have them together or like independently, but at the same time, control uh, the ducking for that one main music track. For as powerful an effect as the ducker is, uh, period, this is a great way to just like make it more useful in more situations. There are a few things I am not the best equipped to show off, so we'll go through those pretty quick. Uh, number one, in this update does have support for spatial video exports. I, you know, do not have the crazy expensive Apple headset, but if you want to watch stuff on it, you can now make stuff in Resolve and export it natively, and I guess the file that needs. Uh, we've heard a lot about how Blackmagic is making that like immersive uh, Ursa camera, so we might have more info about that soon. It definitely seems like an area that like Resolve and Blackmagic want to be involved in. We also have support for bins presets uh, in Resolve that allow for empty bins and that might be confusing at first, but if you have like a default project setup where you want lots of different bins, you know, that uh, exist, but at the beginning of a project, they might be empty if they're like for like sound effects or extra logos or stuff like that. Now you can save those presets for use in future projects that allow for that hierarchy of, of bins that can live in your media pool and allow them to be empty at the start. That makes sense. That's cool. I'm sure for some people that'll be very exciting. We're all about organization here. But the next thing I can't really show off even though I really love to is this new support on uh, dual screen layouts that give you more control over your second uh, screen display. I do have two displays here, but they are mismatched resolution. So uh, resolve scaling gets funky quick with this kind of stuff. I would imagine you'll see some really great stuff of this um, from some other resolve creators who maybe have a little bit more of a solid layout to show that on. This does get into the general zone of like UI customization that I know lots of people have lots of different opinions on. Um, this, uh, I'm sure won't be everything that everyone wants, but a little more, a little more leeway, a little more customization, seems cool. While we're looking at the menus, one thing that the patch notes uh, specifically call out on uh, Windows and Linux, because I believe this is a pretty wide feature in Mac versions of soft different software, is that now on the help tab, you have a little search bar. So like on this timeline that looks like trash, if you somehow forgot where the button was in the menu or forgot the keyboard shortcuts to delete gaps, type it in there and now you have this delete gaps option. It shows you where it is and if my timeline is selected, I got delete gaps, gaps, click it and it will delete those gaps for me. And while, you know, still giving me that reference of where all these options were. This is super helpful. On a recent video, I showed off the DaVinci Resolve user manual, which has like a quick reference guide for all the options in this menu, but having this live in the little help folder here, really nice. Next, we are jumping to the deliver page because uh, in our export settings now, check this out. 
by default when you have this custom export, which you would then uh, set up if you want to make a new preset as well. Under resolution and timeline, you have options to pull from the timeline resolution of whatever timeline you're working on and have that determine your resolution and frame rate. Again, quality of life, lots of people have asked for this. You can, you can have lots of controls, especially with uh, audio normalization or maybe like uploading to YouTube, some of that. You can have that all set, but if you're working in timelines of multiple different resolutions, you can have that one master export render preset that includes all those settings and features you want while knowing that it will always pull the resolution and frame rate, or you can toggle either one of those off or on or off if you want to. So you retain a lot of flexibility there. You don't need to build two versions of the same preset, one for HD and one for 4K. Um, I do really like that it shows you your timeline, frame rate and resolution here just so you can be sure that's what you want. Uh, but this will be really cool for people uh, building out presets. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about a little bit, very little bit, because this will be something I circle back on. Okay, maybe two things. If I hop into the Fusion page, um, number one, a very small thing. In some recent videos, I have shown off um, this really cool uh, edit controls menu. If you've missed those videos, this is incredible. You can add so much functionality to uh, singular tools in Fusion by using this menu. You can either right click on a node or on the name of the node in the inspector, edit controls, and very quickly, some new stuff here. Um, by default, it blanks out. And if you wanna create a new control, you can uh, type in here something new. You can select a type of control, all that stuff. But now we have options down here for hide and clear. Hide if you have an existing effect and you just don't want it to be visible in the inspector, you can click hide. But also if you uh, set up a custom control, if you add something like this new control, if I click okay, it adds that new control here. Now I can go back into that menu, scroll down to find that new control and just clear, get rid of it. Most of the time you won't want to go about deleting controls on nodes, but especially if you're building custom tools, that's really cool. But one wild thing I couldn't even believe that was here. I'll take that back. New, I'll make that a slider. Okay, uh, nope, I'm hopping back in there because on that new control, you could define the range and stuff, but now we have this spline dropdown. If I set this to smooth, nothing happens here, but if I click okay, and now if I, if I set a keyframe at for, for zero, come forward, set a keyframe up at one. If I open up my spline viewer, look at that control, it has like an, an ease already applied. This is very interesting. I'm not sure where this will be most useful, but it's cool. But that is not the big thing I wanted to show you. The thing I wanna show you on a bare bones level before I make a follow-up video all about it is switch. Not that switch, um, um, it's a node. Switch, uh, if I can spell, switch. Oh boy, if I do something like make a red background and then a green or yellow background, I plug those into switch, I look at the switch and boom, I have input zero, input one, hey, it goes back and forth. And you might be thinking if you know a uh, resolve, hey, isn't this kind of like the dissolve node that we had earlier? where you could plug stuff into a dissolve node, a foreground, background. By default, it was a slider, but you could always make that another type of control. Isn't that kind of the same? Yes, but on Switch, what happens if I go uh, create another background that is blue, plug that into the Switch? Nope, you can't until you go into config and turn that number of inputs up to three. Now you can plug in a three there and on switch, that even changes the control here. So now it's red, yellow, blue. This goes up to nine, nope. You can put it up to 20, you can put it up to as many as you want. And this alone would be cool. This also works natively inside the shapes system, which was not something you could do before. You, could, you can see if I make a switch disconnected from anything, it's this gray node, but it recognizes what it is plugged into, it's, wild and and that's not enough i mean and this stuff with shapes it was really hard to do this inside the shapes layer especially with multiple inputs uh presets could get complicated quick and with like lots of expressions we can start to bog down an effect but the really really crazy thing is that this also exists 
how do I want to show this off? I'll make a uh, text layer. I'm showing this off more than I thought it would. I'll probably, I will have a follow-up video sometime. I'm looking in as many different areas of this as I can find, but Switch is also a modifier. If you don't know what that means, it means it's cool and powerful on any control, even this text control, I can right click and add a switch to that, which do it isn't, doesn't come in as another node. It lives over here in modifiers. And now I have an input for all these different texts. So if I do like, hi, hey, crank this up, up to five. Hi, hey, yo, hello, hola. Then on this text here, oh, this is interesting. When you did it here as an expression, you do have this drop down. But now you have the simple drop down control for for however many of these texts you want. And you didn't have to add these controls manually over in config. You can also rechange these to like match that text. But this doesn't need to be text. If I have something like a transform control and I want different values or different presets on like the size of this parameter, I can modify the size with a switch and just do something like uh, one or 0.5 simple like hey do you want this text to be this big or do you want it to be that big and then you can just like click back and forth and you can have animation on these you could build out multiple different animation and slide between them with just a button press i did go on a lot more about switch than i thought i would but it's very cool new fusion tool that i'm going to use all the time. I've already got some plans for how I can update some of my old presets with this and possibly make them much faster, which is great for all of you. Um, hey, I make presets for Resolve if you didn't know. And if there's something I don't mind getting distracted by in update videos, it's cool fusion stuff because that's what I'm all about. So I hope you check out Resolve 19.1. Make sure you back up all your project files and go through that normal process if you do. But if you want more fusion goodness, including some uh, modifiers, if you've never messed with this kind of stuff before, um, my recent little series of videos looking at text tools and then text um, expressions for those more complicated tools and then modifiers for those expressions for those more complicated tools. Um, those should be some recent videos you can check out. But you know, you know, I have other videos. So if you like this, if you like Resolve, uh, I've got plenty more stuff for you. But if you also want to Download Resolve 19.1. Do that too, because it's fun. There's some fun stuff in there. I'm excited what we'll all do with it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.